Don't you have anything better to do than just stand there? Done enough for one day. Buried Herb Anderson this morning. I don't want to hear about that. Had to be done. Talking about people dying upsets me. You know that. Sorry. Maybe you could do it better? It always gives you pleasure to see me making a fool of myself, don't it? Just a rag, anyway. I thought it was going to be pretty. All you know is whether a cow is pretty or a steer is scrawny. I always like whatever you wear. I haven't had a pretty dress. Ben? Yeah? Tell me about St. Louis. We're gonna ride out to St. Louis in our own carriage. It's gonna be a spring... No, no, I, I mean right from the beginning. There's a trail boss coming up to Sedalia. His name is Favor. He's got lots of money. He's going to ride up and he's going to say, Ben Foley, you got cattle to sell. And I'm going to say, that's right, Mr. Favor, 200 head. How much money is that? $1,200. $1,200. And then he's going to cut my herd in with his, and he's going to give me all that money in cash. And what are we going to do with that money? The first thing we're going to do is buy you a pretty new dress. And then we're going to buy a carriage to ride out in. Oh, it's We'll ride all the way to St. Louis. Yes, we will. And we'll ride into town. It'll be a spring morning. And we'll ride up and down the streets of St. Louis until we find a house that's beautiful enough for you to live in. And we'll buy that house. And we're going to have servants. And they'll wait on your hand and foot. And we're going to give parties? Every night and twice on Sunday. Oh, and I'll sing and dance. <laughs> Go on, Ben. Go in the house, Lucille. Well, you haven't finished telling me about... I said, get inside. The least you can do is ask me nice. Doc. Hello, Ben. Came as soon as I could. Too late. Yeah, I know. I found Anderson's grave on my way. I did what I could for him. Wish you'd come in time. Uh, Mrs. Miller was having twins in San Pecos. Uh, what did Anderson die of? Well, I'm not a doctor. It looked like a fever. Well, uh, did you notice anything peculiar about the way he looked when he was taken sick? He didn't look good. Well, nothing more than that, huh? No, no, nothing more than that. Well, so long, Doc. Oh, uh, Ben. You have any trouble with your cattle? No. Well, you bought 20 head from Tom Hunnaker the other day. What if I did? Well, it just seems a little... Strange, that's all. You made a deal to sell your herd to the cattle drive coming out of the Sedalia, didn't you? I have. Well, it just seems a little peculiar that you'd buy more cattle, that's all. I promised the trail boss 200 head. You found yourself 20 short. Why? Look, Doc, you're mixing in cattle business. I don't like it. I'm mixing in cattle business because I'm a doctor, Ben. I dug up that grave. You dug up Herb Anderson's grave? That's right. You shouldn't have done that, Doc. Your business is healing the living, not nosing around the dead. Are you trying to tell me what my business is? Move over. Oh, look, drive on. Now, you didn't kill Anderson. The same illness that killed your cattle killed him. 
Why don't you go back on the deal you have with the trail boss? A herd's only two hours' drive to the south. People around here made up a lot of jokes when Lucille and I got married. Jokes about her and jokes about me. I didn't think any of them were funny. Well, neither did I. I know. That's why I'm sorry to do what I have to do. Lucille wants a lot of things. Things that cost money. I'm going to get that money. That won't give you what you want or need. Maybe. At least I can try. Drive on, Doc. If a body kiss a body me a body cry every lassie has a laddie none they say ever but all the boys Doctor's kitten, Swiss one. Gonna have to set that shoulder, snap it back into place. Help him sit up, Mushy. Come on, you're gonna have to take some of this. This is gonna hurt. You shouldn't ought to waste good liquor like that. You're gonna set my shoulder, ain't you? No, all right. I'm just trying to make it easy on you. Set my shoulder. I think it's the pain making him act that way? I think it's the whiskey. What's wrong with whiskey? When Price signed on, he told me to fire him if he ever touched a drop. Well, who on? Temperance man on the cattle drive, huh? All right, hang on, Price. I'm hanging on. <clears throat> All right, let him down, Mush. You kill him. I think. You haven't got the brains of a full-grown idiot. Hand me that whiskey. No. No whiskey, Wish. Well, how am I going to bring him to? Water. You want to make him real sick? <laughs> All right, go get a bucket of water. Mr. Favor. That's me. Oh, Ben Foley. Oh, well, you're Mr. Foley. This is Rowdy Yates, my ramrod, and Pete Nolan, my scout. I was expecting you at the ranch about noon. Well, one of my drovers ran into a little trouble. Oh, I thought something of the kind might have happened. You heard ready to pick up? 200 head. The price you let it quoted was uh, six dollars a head. That was a price I wrote you in San Antonio. It still is. Now, um, about a bill of sale. I got a lawyer over in Emerson drawing one up. Fine. Oh. Oh. You think you're gonna live? I might make it. It ain't too late. I could ride in town tonight. Get the bill of sale signed. You come over first thing in the morning, pick up the cattle, and the bill of sale. That is, if you have the cash on you. No, I got the cash. My wife. Pretty, ain't she? Very pretty. We've been married close to a year. Say, uh, why don't you figure on having breakfast with us tomorrow? You'll get to meet her. Uh, I'd like that. Well, I guess I'll ride on back into town then. See you later. Oh. 
We'll camp here for today. Tomorrow morning, we'll go over and pick up Foley's cattle and cut them into the herd. That shoulder bothering you? I said your shoulder bother you. No, that's fine. Well, that's good. You get a couple of days rest. Yeah, I'll rest. Lucille. I'm here with the trail drive. We're camped a few miles away. I, I heard you were here. I, I wanted to see you again. Why? Make sure you were all right. You didn't wait to make sure I was all right in San Antonio. San Antonio, I was running. I've been running ever since. Isn't this a little bit out of your way? I wanted to make sure you were all right. I'm married. I'm Mrs. Foley. My husband owns this ranch, and he owns a herd of cattle. He's going to sell it. Then we're going to St. Louis and buy a big, beautiful house and entertain. Yes, I'm all right. You look just the same like the last time I seen you. It was over a year ago. A lot of things change. Some things don't. You came to find out if I was all right now. You found out. Why don't you ride out of here? Why don't you look at me? You expect me to sing and dance because I'm so happy to see you. To see the man who shot me. To see the man who ran off before he found out what he did to me. Lucille, I was drunk. You know how I am when I'm drunk. I'm all right. I'm better than all right. I'm happy. And I never wanted to see you again. You never will. Lucille, that's what the bullet did, didn't it? Lucille, I didn't know. I didn't remember. I was more drunk than I've ever been in my life. I ran. I thought you didn't want to see me because I was crippled. No, no. I was afraid I might even have killed you. Well, then you, you didn't stop loving me. No more than I could stop breathing. Help me up. I'm glad I got to see you once more. 
once more. Yes, because now you're going to ride out of here and forget all about me. No, I'm never going to ride away from you again. Yes, you are. Because I told you I'm married. And I don't mind about my leg. I'm... Well, I'm... Well, go on. You go on. Tell me you're happy. Yes, I am. Goodbye, Frank. I'm going to go in... I'm going to go in my house and my husband's house. <laughs> And there's no place in it for you. What are you going to do? Well, you know, I haven't had a drink since... since I left San Antonio. What am I going to do? I'm going to get myself good and drunk. you come into town. and he's going to need a friend. I've never seen him take a drink before. Well, he's lapping it up. He's making up for a lot of lost time. Well, I guess it's his business. Yeah. Hey, those girls over there, they're uh, real friendly, aren't they? Looking for some friendship? Well, you know, I'm with a trail herd. I ain't seen nothing but cattle for a long time. <laughs> Take your drink over to their table. I kind of think they'll say hello. girls over here. You want to join us? Who are you? I mean, you know who I am. You'd like me to believe that, wouldn't you? Uh, 
I don't care what you believe. Let's get the way out of here. You're drunk. You got a gun, you better go for it. Well, he ain't hurt bad. He took it in the shoulder. I better send one of the boys for the sheriff. He ought to be locked up. He needs a doc more than he needs the sheriff. Yeah, he didn't hurt nobody. I don't much care what you do with him. Just get him out of here. Help me take him over to the dock. Maybe I better take him over to the doctor by myself. No, well, I think maybe I ought to go along with you. I don't know. He looks like he might be coming too any minute. If he does and sees you, there's no telling what he might try. Yeah. Well, I'll, I'll tell you, I'll be in the saloon there if you need me for anything. The doc will patch him up. I'll see you in the morning when you come over to pick up my herd. Oh, yeah, that's right. You can pick up your friend the same time. Sure want to thank you, Mr. Foley. You go back and finish your drink. All right, I will. See you in the morning. Don't worry about him. I'll see he's taken care of. You said three or four was coming. Yeah, most likely. I hope they ain't too particular about their food. Well, I've been eating it for a year. I never complained. You can't help yourself. I won't have to cook in St. Louis, will I, Ben? No, ma'am. I won't have to set the table there. I want to get all the things put out so I don't have to move around too much when the drovers get here. You've got time. I ain't here yet. What is the name of the man that shot you? I don't remember. Seems to me that's the one name you'd never forget. I did forget. You know, I forget lots of things. Did you ever see him after the shooting? No. Suppose you did. Well, why should I? He wouldn't be coming around here. You can't tell. Supposing he used to walk in, what did you do? Well, I'd, I'd spit in his face and tell him to leave. I wish you'd stop asking these questions. I, I don't like to be reminded. Ah, uh, the drovers are coming. I'll go out and meet them. How does everything look, Ben? Fine. How do I look? The way you're acting, somebody might think you're expecting the governor of Texas. Or somebody you're in love with. I promise you, is waiting inside. I'm glad to hear that. How's Frank? Frank? Yeah, Frank Price. I had left him with you last night. I wouldn't know how he is. What, well, ain't he in there? Well, Roddy told me about what happened last night. I'm grateful to you for helping out. I'm not sure you should be grateful, Mr. Favor. Well, where's Frank? Jail. In jail for what? Murder. Murder? I left him with you. You, you were going to take him to the docks last night. I took him over to Doc Morgan's. The doc was patching him up when I left. Well, then who did he kill? I was outside getting into my wagon. I heard a shot. Went back inside. Price didn't have to fire the second shot. The first one had killed Morgan. Why would he want to kill the doctor? Why'd he try to kill him? I'm afraid we'll be passing up that breakfast, Mr. Foley. Let's get back to town. I thought you said you were going to fire Price the minute you saw him. Well, I ain't seen him yet, so he ain't fired yet. Until I do, he's still one of our men. I want to hear his story. We'll be back to pick up the cattle as soon as we can. I'm sorry about the delay. I don't mind.
Your guests ain't coming. Why not? They've got some chores to do in town. Seems one of their people is being held for murder. Well, Doc Morgan was killed last night. I forgot to mention it before. Well, Doc Morgan, he was here yesterday. Well, he's been here lots of times. But you rode off with him. Then I heard a shot. You're letting your imagination run away with you. Doc Morgan wasn't killed until last night. In his own house. By a drover. Aren't you going to ask me the drover's name? Why should I? I, I don't know any drovers. Well, I'll tell you anyway. His name was Frank Price. Well, what do you remember then? Well, I went into the saloon. I bought myself a bottle of whiskey. I started emptying it. I remember the first couple of drinks. They felt good. That's all I remember. You didn't start drinking until you came into town. What did you do before that? It's not important. Look, Frank, do you want to hang? If I killed a man, sure. All right, if you killed him. Mr. Favor, I don't know. I. Well, I could have killed him. I could have killed him and not even known about it. Well, you've got some back pay coming. You want me to hire a lawyer? It might just as well. The money isn't going to do me any good where I am. So long. Thanks for letting us see him, Sheriff. Well, from what I could hear, it didn't do much good for you or him. Yeah. Is there a lawyer in town? Well, there was one, Fred Huniker. Got tired of starving, took to ranching. Got a spread close to Ben Foley's. Good, we'll be going out that way. Say, uh, could you tell me what this um, Doc Morgan was like? Good doctor, honest man. I know what you're thinking, but he wouldn't have given your man any cause to kill him. If he killed him. That's still got to be proved, ain't it? Trouble is, there ain't much time. Uh, ain't much time for what? Saving your friend's neck. The trial's tomorrow. Mr. Favor. When you see Fred Huniker, you can tell him something for me. Yeah, sure. What? Well, Doc Morgan's body was awful cold. Awful cold when I found him last night. Like he'd been dead for many hours. How's Frank? He don't remember most of what happened. If he does remember, he ain't telling. Come on, we got no time to waste around here. Where are we heading, boss? Foley's Ranch. We got 200 dead of cattle to buy brand and cut into the herd. What about Frank? He ain't going nowhere. Too. I had a lawyer draw it up. Sheriff told me there wasn't any lawyer in town. That's right, there wasn't. Yesterday there was, though. A fellow named Pons. Comes to Emerson once, twice a month, take care of the town's legal business. Where's the Honecker spread? Well, about a mile west of here. Why? I was told he was a lawyer. Well, he used to be. He ain't practiced law in years. I don't think he'd be interested in taking your friend's case. Well, I'll have to ask him anyway. Riding over to the lawyer's ranch. Don't rush things here. Well, what do you want us to do? Oh, 
Give the cattle a head count, but don't start branding until I get back. Uh, we'll count all four feet and divide by four. That'll slow us down a little. Yeah. I haven't practiced law in years, Mr. Fraley. Besides, I'm not sure I'd be interested in taking a friend's case anyway. You got a reason for that? I, uh, I saw him yesterday afternoon. Oh, where? Well, I'd been to town. I was riding back. Your friend came riding up from the Foley Ranch. I passed him on the road. Well, what does that prove? Nothing. I saw his face, though. It wasn't entirely sane. Well, he didn't mention anything about prices having been in his ranch yesterday afternoon. Well, probably didn't know. Hey, what's Mrs. Foley like? Very pretty girl. She used to sing in saloons and stuff. Keeps pretty much to herself, though. I suppose the fact she's lame has something to do with it. She wasn't always lame, you know. What happened to her? Ben told me once. He met her in San Antonio. A drunken cowhand shot her by accident. Drunken cowhand? Did she ever mention his name? Not according to Ben. There was something the sheriff wanted me to tell you. What's that? I got to Dr. Morgan's. The body was cold. Oh? Interesting. You get paid for your services, Mr. Honecker. Frank Price has got quite a bit of back pay coming. If that ain't enough, I'll make up the difference. Well, I don't need the money, Mr. Favor. I just sold 20 head of cattle to Ben Foley at a very nice profit. I'm buying Foley's herd. I know you are. Why is he buying cattle from you? I imagine he... Didn't have as many as he'd agreed to deliver to you. Why don't you ask Ben? I'll do that. First of all, though, I want a lawyer for Frank Price. Mr. Favor, you've got one. <sighs> Mr. Favor, I, I don't know what you're talking about. It isn't very hard to understand, Mrs. Foley. Was Frank Price here yesterday afternoon? Look, I, I'm a very busy woman. I got lots of things to do. I got to cook and clean. Was and... Frank Price here yesterday afternoon? I don't know any Frank Price. He was seen here. Who saw him? Ben? Oh. So he was here then. How long was Frank here yesterday afternoon? I don't know what you're thinking, Mr. Faber. I didn't even let him in this house. He rode up like nothing had changed. He didn't realize I'm married now, and my husband's going to sell this ranch and, and his cattle, and he's going to take me to St. Louis, and we'll have a fine home and, and entertain people. Is that what you told him? Of course I did. Is there any chance that your husband's on here? You're asking too many questions. Frank Price is slated to hang. Why should that make any difference to me? Sure. I knew Frank Price. And look. This is what he did to me. And then he rode away. And I never saw him again until yesterday. And yesterday he didn't want to ride away, but I made him. Look at me, Mr. Favor. Why should I care if he hangs? I'm sorry, Mrs. Foley, but whatever Frank Price did to you doesn't make him guilty of Morgan's murder. Even the sheriff doesn't believe he's guilty. But he's only guessing. Guessing what? The sheriff says that the doctor was dead for hours when he got to him. And Frank Price hadn't been in town for hours. Why tell me that? Frank Price needs all the help he can get. He was drunk, and there are some people who know what drink does to Frank. Goodbye, Mr. Favor.
the third time they've gone through that herd counting heads. It ain't as though they rushed the first two times, either. Well, Mr. Favre likes for us to be real careful about these things. <laughs> well, if he's this careful about everything he does, he ain't never going to get that herd to Sedalia. Not this year, anyway. Well, his way... Well, things are going to move a little faster now that he's here. I hope so. I wasn't planning on spending the winter selling 200 head of cattle. Scott yet? Almost. Good. Why don't you uh, give him a hand? Right. You were over at the Hanukkah Ranch quite a while, weren't you? Well, it didn't seem very long. The direction you came riding up from, though, was my ranch, not Hanukkah's. Well, I don't know the country around here very well yet. I thought maybe it was because you did come from my ranch. Why? Would that bother you? Why should it? That finishes the count, boss. It's 200 head, all right. Yeah, it's too late to start branding them today. We'll let it lay over till tomorrow. Is that all right with you, Mr. Poole? Well, it'll have to be. You're welcome to spend the night at my ranch. No, we'll get back to the herd. That's an awful lot of riding to do, seeing as you're coming back in the morning. Yeah, I know. Somebody would almost think you didn't want to accept my hospitality, Mr. Favor. Somebody might. Well, I'll see you in the morning, then. What did you tell the trail boss this afternoon? I didn't tell him a thing. Did he say different? He didn't even say he was here. The trail boss told me something. He said that Doc Morgan was dead for many hours before the sheriff got to him. What are you going to do? I'm going to buy you a house in St. Louis. You're making fun of me. I was never more serious in my life. Evening, Sheriff. Well, it's getting so a fella can't sleep on the job anymore. How are you, Ben? Oh, pretty fair. You giving you any trouble? No, no trouble. No. In a way, I feel responsible. For what? For him killing Doc Morgan. If I hadn't taken him to the doc. Ah, the jury ain't said he killed the doc yet. What do you think? I kind of think so, but... It's not your fault, anyway. How sure are you it ain't my fault? you don't remember, I'm Ben Foley. Foley? I can make it easier for you. I'm the man Lucille married. I, uh, I never had the chance before. Congratulations. Thanks. 
What are you doing here, Mr. Foley? Brought you something. I had the feeling you might want a drink around about this time. Stay where you are. Now pull the cork out of the bottle. I'll take a good long drink. You got a reason for this? I got a reason. I'd like to hear it. You don't remember anything that happens when you're drunk. You don't remember killing Doc Morgan. You don't remember firing a bullet at Lucille. The bullet that shattered her knee made her lame for the rest of her life. No, I don't remember. I'm just giving you one more thing not to remember. What's that? Getting drunk and killing the sheriff. See, it don't make any difference. Both you and the sheriff are going to die anyway, so... You hate me for making Lucille lame. No. I don't hate you for that at all. She wouldn't have married me otherwise. Then why? Drink up and I'll tell you. Feel good? What were you gonna tell me? You didn't kill Doc Morgan. I did. Why? He found out my hired hand died of anthrax. Anthrax he caught off of the cows in my herd. They heard that you were gonna sell to Mr. Favor. They heard I'm still gonna sell to him. If they got anthrax, that'll infect the whole herd. The money I make from that sale is gonna help me make Lucille happy. Now, both you and I want to see her happy, don't we? Anthrax will go through a herd of 3,000 head in two, three weeks, leaving nothing behind but the fever bugs himself. That's the trail boss's problem, not mine. Yours neither. Now, come on, take another drink. for the jail. Foley won't try anything with the sheriff in there. I don't know about that. We got Pete and Quinn's got in the back. No telling what Foley might do if he saw his wife come into that jail. Better stop her running. Drunk enough yet, Mr. Foley. Keep working at it. You had everything going just the way you wanted, didn't you? Trail boss was asking too many questions. Fred Honecker was talking. Even the sheriff wasn't sure. They were old men that you knew for many years. Don't mean I've got to trust him. I don't trust Lucille either. You got Lucille. Wasn't that enough? You're forgetting one thing. She ain't in love with me. She never was. A drunken cowhand threw her into my arms. A drunken cowhand will help me keep her. You think another swallow might do it, Price? It might. Go ahead. Take another drink. Wrong, Mr. Foley. If something gone wrong ain't gonna do you any good. Did? Not yet, but. Too bad there ain't a doctor around to help him. 
Better take a look at the sheriff. He's all right. He's just knocked out. Oh, see, I, I... Don't talk. I got to. It's the only way I could make you happy, wasn't it? Talking. Remember? We we'll ride east in our own carriage until we come to the city of St. Louis. And it'll be a spring morning Oh. And we'll ride up and down the streets of St. Louis and, and we'll hunt for a big, beautiful house. And we'll buy that house. And we'll have servants who wait on me hand and foot. And we're going to give parties. Ben? He can't hear you anymore, Lucille. Miss Foley, I'm afraid you're gonna have to destroy every cow in your herd. When they got anthrax that bad, there's just no way of saving them. I'll take care of that, Mr. Favor. I, uh, can't begin to tell you how grateful I am. Bryce, you went into town against my orders, didn't you? Yeah, I'm sorry about that, Mr. Favor. I'll, uh, I'll catch up with the herd as soon as I'm finished here. No, you won't. You're fired. I uh, hope that doesn't break your heart. message for you from your ramrod. What's the message? Help. Help. Yes, unfortunately, he's a prisoner in my stockade waiting to be sentenced. He'll probably get about 30 days hard labor on the railroad. He started to fight, Favor. He's a little upset because his men had to go to work so soon after signing their work contracts. Sign a work contract? You. Sign work contracts, you rotten, you slimy, dirty... Temper, favor. It's in good cause, you know. My heard. The supplies, the other men. Right where you left them, for the moment. But don't worry about them. I'll take care of them, too. I'll take care. Uh, all right, what is it? What do you want of me, Damon? Everything. I need your men to work for me. I need your ramrod to keep your men happy. I need your cook to feed them. That means I need your cook's helper and your chuck wagon. Got a lot of beef out there, too. I need that, just in case your chuck wagon's low on chow. Is that all? Are you sure you ain't forgotten nothing? Just you, Favor. I need you. None of it works properly unless you're there. Your mind and your heart and your soul committed unequivocally to the grand task I've laid out for all of us. I need you, Favor. And what's more, I'm gonna get you. Oh, you're... Oh, you're gonna get me all right, Damon. You're gonna get me stomping up and down your backbone until your ribs pop out in your face. You're gonna get me tearing out your greasy, dirty little heart and feeding it to you bit by bit until you're begins to squirm so bad, it's gonna turn you inside out! 
Too close, if I were you, Mr. Damon. They're, they're still awful mad. But are they working, Finn? Oh, indeed, they are, yes. We've laid almost a hundred yards since sun up. I think how much better they'd work if they was happy. I indeed, yes. Well, that's the next move. Be, be careful now, Mr. Damon, be careful. Well, don't stop on my account, man. Oh, ain't she the funny one? Well, I guess a minute or two break is called for. Come on, gather around here, men. Gather around. Now, I know how you all feel about me. You're pretty sore at me, ain't you? Well, you don't know how lucky you are. <laughs> That's right. A day is going to come, and it's not far off, where you're going to say to me, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Damon, for getting me out of the saddle and the dust and the sleepless nights and the uncertainty and into a future, a career. There's a new world out there, men. Our world is changing. There's new horizons. You be ready for it. Damon, you just wait till my men here. You got me on a, on a phony, trumped-up charge of abducting a woman. Ain't gonna believe her for no minute. No. No, they're gonna... They're gonna come here and tear you limb from limb. You just tell me all these lies to try and break me down. Morning. What are you telling them, Damon? Well, all I got to sell is the future of Mr. Yates. They don't have to buy it if they don't want to. You're lying to them. Well, I admit I have to do a pretty effective job of creating enthusiasm. You get me out of here. Not while you're so hostile, Mr. Yates. You know, your boss, Mr. Faber, doesn't feel like you do. He's calm and sympathetic now that he's cooled off. I think maybe I better bring him down here. It'll calm you down to have his strong, reassuring hand on things, wouldn't it? It'll kill you, Damon, if I don't do it first. Now, temper, Mr. Yates. Why, your, your body builds up poisons that way. If you want some exercise, just call the guard. He'll find a spire shovel for you. Oh. Sure, get some pretty visitors. Hold it. That's an old gag. <laughs> well, it's kind of romantic. Change of heart. turn crooked and they throw me in jail. Will you come and try and get me out? Oh, I wish every sheriff was as sweet as you. <laughs> Why did you come? To apologize for what I did. And to bring you your boots. Can you forgive me? 
Goldie. Hank Goldie, of course I could. Yeah, I could forgive you if uh, it just changed your testimony a little bit. Get me out of here. Oh, Goldie, Goldie, how could you? Beautiful, warm, giving, wonderful girl like you. I mean, lying like that about me abducting you. I had to. Oh, I understand. I do. But now... I just can't do it, Gil. Oh, and I know it sounds ridiculous, but... I wish you'd forgive me anyway. Goldie, darling. I not only do not forgive you, I hate your guts. And besides that, I think you got fat legs that... sitting on a bench out here, a whittling. That's you. And she confided she got the funniest feeling about you. All over. Boy, she likes you. You're a fool in me. I know you just gotta be a fool in me. Now, why in the ever-loving world would I want to do that? Well, you, you mean that she just... Me? Yeah. Boy, if I was you, I would run right after her and grab her up in my arms. Are you going to miss the chance of a lifetime? Go! Well, here goes nothing. Jonathan Damon. I work for the railroad. Oh. How do you do? Oh, do you mind? No, sir, not at all. I'm real short on customers right now. Say, I heard there was a real fracas over at your place last night. Do you want to... Hmm. Oregano. Oregano? Yeah, oregano. Yeah. Oregano. And my 
marjoram, too. You know about oregano and marjoram? Just a little trace in there. And I'd say it was simmering very slowly. Oh, glory be. A man who knows about oregano and marjoram. Oh, what a waste. What do you mean, what a waste? Trying to master chef, spoiling away his gifts on a bunch of gut stuffers who only know hot beans from cold, and then I can't be sure. Truer words was never spoken, mister. Oh. You ever seen a railroad kitchen car? I mean, a kitchen hooked right onto a train? Yeah, one whole railroad car, uh, all kitchen, uh, hooked right on next to the dining car. Yeah. Serve the passengers right while they're traveling in there. Boy. And we got all this nice equipment, shiny, complete, whole thing. And right now, it isn't worth this scrubby little chuck wagon. And why not? Because we haven't got a man who knows how to deal with all that magnificent equipment. Look, you know, on a railroad, you can't hire just any old cook. You gotta have a man that really, really knows and loves to make fine food in there, you know? A man with the soul of an artist. You can't have an old grease bomber in there playing around with spices like sage, savory, thyme. We got important people traveling on the railroad, discerning people that really know what fine food tastes like. Yeah. Hey. You come with me. I'd like to know where you place all that magnificent equipment. I'd like to know how you design a railroad kitchen car. You know something, a railroad's just like a trail drive. It just won't go proper without a good cook. Why, we're absolutely helpless without you. a little revolution, huh? Get the men back to the herd. Yo, yo, you listening to me? Well, I, I, I better get Mr. Rowdy. Yo, yo.
I surely do miss all this out here. Miss what, sir? Oh, the outdoors, the travel, the peace and the quiet of a cattle camp. Yeah, it sure takes me back to when I was a boy. Uh, you were a drover, Mr. Demon? Yeah, well, not exactly a drover. I was, uh, went on a few drives. I sort of helped out the cook, you know. Mr. Demon, that's what I do. No, really? Well, no, that's a coincidence. It sure is. Yeah, but you know, man has to grow up, face life sometimes, sooner or later. I guess so. Yeah, there's only a limit to how far a man can drift. You take Rowdy and those other drovers, and I explained to them all the advantages that they were going to have by working for me. You know what they said? What? They said, Mr. Damon, you've given us a chance for a better life. That's exactly what they said. And they were so excited, they didn't come back and pick up their things. Yeah. You know, I, I guess that's, that's my biggest reward in this whole business, is helping people. Well, you know, Mr. Damon, that must make you feel real good. Yeah, yeah. And humble. Humble, too. Well, I guess I better be going. It's nice for you to come and visit. Well, I'll tell you. I'll tell you something. It wasn't just strictly a social call. I, I want to give you the same opportunity I gave those other boys. Oh, but I couldn't, Mr. Damon. I mean, uh, not until they heard so. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's right. Yeah. Mm. Well. Uh, Mr. Damon. Yeah? Mr. Damon? Uh-huh. Uh, maybe I could leave, uh, maybe I could leave after the hurt so. Well, I don't know about Please, that. Please, Mr. Damon, I'm strong and I can work hard. No, but that's a little late, you know, it's getting on. Mr. Damon, uh, I'm willing to face life, too. Yeah, well, well, we got those rules. I don't know. Please, Mr. Damon, I'll work hard for you. All you gotta do is just sign right down there at the bottom. You have made a wise decision. Yes, sir. Oh, uh, just one more thing. What's that? Message from Wishbone. He's a uh, cooking for the railroad now, you know, but he needs a chuck wagon. He wants you to bring it on over. Says it's got a lot of his things in it. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Do it right away. <laughs> yeah, I tried to keep them gathered up the best I could. But... Look, I got an important errand for you to go on. I want you to go to Oxford. It's about 30 miles up. You get there. You go immediately to the telegraph office and have that sent off to Jonathan Damon in Fremont. I'll pick up a horse in the Remuda and meet you in Hank's bar at Fremont. I'll be waiting for you. Well, that's fine, Miss Fair, but you see there's nobody here to take care of the herd. That's all right. This is more important. Just leave the herd be. Leave the... Leave the herd be? That's right. Well, no, Mr. Fairby. See, I can't do that. I, nobody... Wentz! Leave the herd be. Leave the herd be? Good! You got it! Now go! This is terrible. Say, I have to send a telegraph message at midnight. Uh, you'll be open then? Well, ordinarily I would, but this is an abnormal situation. I have to go out and make a delivery right now. Oh, not, not, not out to end of track by any chance. Well, yes, as a matter of fact, it is. My, what a coincidence. You know, that's a 
pretty lonesome ride out there this time of night. Yes, it is, but these messages have to go through, you know. Oh, I understand. Would you mind terribly if I rode along with you? I... You promise not to laugh. <laughs> I'm afraid of the dark. I know exactly how you feel. I feel the same way myself. You, uh, you have athlete's feet, huh? No, no. Oh, that, um, <laughs> that's none of my business, really. I'll tell you what, uh, why don't I treat us to uh, drinks over at Hank's Bar, a uh, little liquid courage, you know? Well, I don't ordinarily go over there. Uh, well, I guess it is called for. <laughs> Chance. Oh, double whiskey for me. I think I'll have a pink lady. Pink lady? No, you'll have two pink ladies. <laughs> My, you are generous, aren't you? Sometimes I think if it weren't for my sideline, I'd go out of my mind. <laughs> oh, really? Do you know this fellow, Jonathan Damon? The one who says can't pay his railroad workers? Oh. Well, his payroll's been here all along. No! Yes. And the payroll department sent him a wire asking why he didn't acknowledge a receipt for it when it came on the stage over a week ago. How about that? Get a hold of Charlie Poe and Luther. Yes, sir. They're coming in now. Mr. Barker, uh, what did you say you do again? I am a barber, but I have an interesting sideline. Ah, yes, and I believe you mentioned that something interesting came up today. I received a telegram indicating that Mr. Damon has had his payroll all along. Now, I suppose somebody's really been made a fool of. How about that, huh? Not only refused to pay you, but then brung in a bunch of incompetent, low-down cattlemen to fill your job. So, if I was you... We ought to go out there and tear the hide right off of him. Good. You men want some action? Well, then, you gather your railroaders together, and you meet me in an hour at the Pink Garden. Boys, I got a score to settle with this demon fellow myself. We've been waiting for a chance like this. Let's go! Come on! Come on! Did anything interesting happen to you today? Yeah. <laughs> 
take care of that Goldie. So you stay around front and watch for the sheriff, yeah? Yeah. Hey, how you feeling anyway? Oh, you depend on me, boss. Why are we? Good, good. Because it's going to be morning by the time we really get rolling. Good luck. Come on, man. Snap two. I was lying, did you? Oh, um, they realized it was a silly little mix-up. They just let me go. Oh. <laughs> well, then, uh, how come you don't have your shoes back? Oh, yeah, that, well, you see, about the boots... You're and... lying to me, Gil Favor. All right, all right, Goldie. I'll make a deal with you. I won't push perjury charges against you if you don't tell the sheriff where I am. I don't know if I can trust you, Gil Saver. You don't know if you can trust me. You go on over there and sit down. Let me think this thing through. Go on. it out? Yep. Good. Little 
children's mouths. They gonna, they gonna take the bread out of your old folks' mouths. They gonna kill your wife. They gonna make you. You be sorry. But one of these glorious days, you know, and you know who that railroad is gonna be dedicated to. No. I'd come back and help him. He's out there watching 2,000 head of cattle. You forget, Mushy, that Mr. Quince is a highly trained specialist. Help yourself, gentlemen. Keep the line moving. Here's one. You've never eaten so good in your life, boys. For you, sir, for you, I have eggs, Botticelli, a la Robespierre. No. Yes. <laughs> well, we spoke, I don't know how to thank you. For you, sir, nothing but the best. Eggs, Botticelli, a la Robespierre. Oh. Eggs in the shell with the heads cut off. <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> there we are. Hey, Mr. Damon. Is that true about the possibility of me maybe making it to a vice president someday? Of course it was true. You ain't afraid of what Mr. Favor's gonna say, are you? I mean, he's not gonna be able to talk you out of it. Oh, no, no. No, Mr. Favor just thinks he's got a lot of influence over me. Actually, I, I pretty much run the whole show myself. Well, this is the moment, if ever I saw one.
You release those men! So I deal a few off the bottom. It's for good cause. Oh, well, well, it's just a figure of speech. Now, you listen to me, Favor. A railroad doesn't get built by polite manners and good intentions. A road gets strung together by hard cash, soft swindle, and bloody knuckles. The men who work for me complain and sweat. Some of them die. But I don't sit around and grieve about it. A railroad's more important than all these men. Who are you? It's just something that's got to be, that's all. Uh, no! No deal! All right, suit yourself.
Rowdy, keep everybody back. Or they'll stampede short. And no noise. <laughs> as I can be. <laughs> now listen, 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 Favor. Why don't you listen to reason? Come on, work for me. Fall up and break every bone in your body. I never worked for a man like you. Spend so much time on his back. How can we have a decent fight with 2,000 cows breathing down our necks? One more punch like that and I won't even let you work for me. fault you heard got spooked. I'm sorry, Favor. I do apologize. you to work for me. I can hire all the brawn I need. But what I really want is men with brains. <laughs> all right, all right. All right, I'll make you a deal. I'll, I'll come work for you. You will? If you win this fight. It's a pleasure. And providing. Providing what? If you lose it, you come to work for me. Favor, you're a man after my own heart. If there's one thing I love, it's a one-sided deal.
must be Fletcher there. You wait here. I really believe that thing brings you luck. That, oh, oh, that that's my lucky piece. Oh. Well, now, wait a minute. I handled it the first day ever new drive. Oh, it sure don't hurt none. Huh. Fletcher. Yeah? Ah, Roddy Yates, I'm here to pick up your herd. Well, what held you up, Yates? No, bad weather. Seems I hit one gully washer after another. Well, you're a week late. My deal was for you to get them to Bent Fork six weeks from today for $6,000. Six thousand? Your 1,500 head to Bent Fork? Oh, that's good money, any way you look at it. The money's for getting the whole herd there in good shape. $30 off for each one you lose. Lose quite a few, and there'd still be good pay for six weeks' work, more or less. Not more or less, exactly. If my herd is not at the railroad shipping pens in Bent Fork, by noon, six weeks from today, the buyer cuts my price $6,000. Well, it takes quite a man to chance that. Of course, if you don't take the chance, no. do it. Well, to take the chance on it. I'm willing to risk my blanket and lifetime debt, but uh, got to check with my boys, see if they're willing to take that kind of risk. Well, now they're coming over. I suppose there's any hitch. I didn't see him shake hands after the bottom. Uh, this here's Mr. Fletcher. He's offered me a very good deal if we can take his herd as far as bent for. A good deal, providing we get him there six weeks from noontime. Now, I can offer you men double wages and a new suit of city duds if we make it there on time. If we don't, well, I can offer you a lot of fresh air and hard riding. We should think it over, but don't take too long. You got five minutes, men, for you to decide. Meanwhile, I'm installing my own segundo, Lash Whitcomb. Look, I have my own second man. He's part of the deal. Besides, he's made the drive many times before. He knows every foot of the road. <laughs> Why, well, I never saw better than that in a Blackstone race. Yeah. So you're the trail hands who were supposed to show here a week ago, hmm? Where's your boss? I am. That's all prime Texas beef you went to there, Mr. Fletcher. You gonna turn it over to a kid? I made a deal, Lash. Besides, he's got the men. Or have you? You in? Yeah. We're in. Fine. Well, you boys get busy and round them up. Now you'll have no trouble. No trouble at all. My lucky piece. Hey, Jay! Will you get out of here before you wait, get wait, wait, wait. My lucky. Wait. Oh. oh, trouble. That's it, Wish. The way that lucky piece fell, we're gonna have nothing but trouble. Get out of here. Get out of here. We went this way. Yeah, but you have to make it in six weeks or less. What's that got to do with it? Oh, plenty. Bent Fork is due east, and this right-hand trail leads due east. 
Seems to me it's a lot shorter. This left-hand trail goes northeast. Looks like a roundabout to me. All I know, Mr. Yates, is this way works. Now, why take a chance? Because we might save four or five days going this way. You got anything against this route? Not a thing. And have a check it. All I know is Mr. Fletcher had you sign me on for what I know, not what I guess. Well, Fletcher ain't running this drive. I am. I'll go scout this right-hand trail. You hold them up here. The other trail, boss, Mr. Yates. will take the worry wrinkles out of you and I saved you a nice big plate of stew. I'm not hungry, Wish. Oh, that right fork it ends in a box canyon. There's no way through. Yeah. That scouting trip of yours cost us about two days, Mr. Yates. Well, we're going to make up for it starting right now. We're going to take the left fork and move out at midnight. So sleep quick. Starring to me. Waha. Waha. Want Waha. Get calm. Call her. I'm going. Could have killed him. Ah, oh, no, just putting the fear of a little lead poison in him, that's all. I know they're kind of steal your blood. If they were hungry, I'd have given them a steer. Yeah, sure. Tomorrow I'll be back again for another. Now, look, if you just have... Not while I'm trail boss, mister. Yeah. Yeah, well, you can count on one thing. They'll be back again, Mr. Yates. There she is, Big Rise River. He's running high this year. Yeah, well, the name sure fits it. Yeah, we just drive him straight across due east. Uh, those cattle bogged down in the mud. Sure, we got them spooky. Uh, sure, that's because that limey kid didn't bull him hard enough. I warned you, I still think you should have fired him. But that could have happened to any one of us. Well, it makes no mind. Would have kept the rest of them on their toes. That's the way they're going to have to be after all that time we lost. And we slowed down with that mud. I don't work that way. We'll move back, make camp here tonight. Maybe the river will drop in the morning. But down for... Look, I, I don't get you, Mr. Yates. Once before, you complained because this route was too roundabout. You had to find a faster way. And now, now you want to lose time. Every steer that I lose costs $30, and you can lose a lot of steers in that river. Oh, sure, sure. With them Indians still trailing us, if we don't make the deadline to Bed Fork, we're all going to lose. You, them, yes, and me too. No double wages, no wages. 
Well, that's a chance we're going to have to take. You got your orders. Take them now. And some of Hercules, of Hector and Lysan. And such great names as these. But of all the world's brave heroes, there's none that can compare. You all right? Oh, sure. I'm fine. Can't you sleep, Mr. Yates? Mr. Yates! Yeah. Well, uh, well, it's none of my business, you know, but Simon's been working spooky cattle all day. Now, he's too tuckered to be out here on that guard. Well, who put him on guard? Oh, never mind. Flash! Hold it up. Yeah? Why'd you put Simon on night guard all night? Did he yammer to you? No, he didn't yammer to me. I just want to know why you're riding the man. I ain't riding him, Mr. Yates. He's one of the best drovers you got to guard a spooky herd. And in case you don't remember, Mr. Yates, this is Indian country. Simon used to be a buffalo soldier. And I'd rather have him on guard watching for Indians all wore out than any of your other drovers as fresh as an unridden brock. Does that satisfy you, Mr. Yates? No, it's not my idea to work a drover to death. And who's Dublin God? We are, Whitcomb. You and me. you on the wagon with me. These ribs are in no shape for you to go swim on a horse. Is the river dead? Nope. Same as it was yesterday before we lost five steers of them Indians. That was up. You being hurt and all, I thought maybe you'd like to hang around here another day or two. Well, no, no, we, uh, we better get them across. You say we can make it, huh? Yeah, yeah, we can make it all right, but... How are you going to boss it? I ain't. You're going to take over. Now look. Mr. Whitcomb here, he's going to take over. He'll follow his orders until I'm fit again. Hi, hmm? gents. You all heard what Mr. Yates said. I want to tell you one thing. There's not going to be any empty pockets on me. We got four days to make up, and we're going to make them up starting right now. I'm going to sweat time and distance out of each and every one of you. I'm going to push you hard enough to raise a blood blister on a, on a rawhide boat. All right, let's go.
mark your calendar? Yeah. Yeah, I whipped him speaking up a little time. And he didn't lose one steer in that rising river. Oh. Yeah, yeah, he's doing all right. It's a big arroyo up over that next little rise. Pull him away from it. Well, I don't aim to pull him into it. Well, just keep moving. You jokers had an easy enough time of it at Rising River. Pushing day and night is easy. What do you want to do, sleep forever? You shove my log, Quinson. Don't you slack off on me. I'll be holding my hand up, Mr. Whitcomb. Ah! Hey, you! The name's Blake. Simon Blake. You getting paid double wages, maybe, to let them cows roam all over the countryside? Huh? Don't you know every foot they move that way means three less foot they move this way? And Bent Fork is this way, or didn't you know? Cow, cow, cow! Yeah! Yeah, cow! Yeah! Cow, Way right, uh, Wickham. Oh. That's right, Blake. Due east. Hear what the man said. Yeah. Oh, pretty good, huh? Good. Is it necessary to go this fast? Well, the beeves haven't lost any meat. Thinking more about the men. Huh? Can't they take it? They can take it. Now, let's take a look at these ribs. When does Benz's come off for good? As soon as you're ready to ride the bent fork on a blanket. Anyway, what are you worried about? Whitcomb's already caught up two of the days we lost. Good right? You're two weeks to make it. I'm gonna drive him right straight on through the dock tomorrow. Bed down the next step. All right, Mr. Whitcomb, I'll pass it on to the men. Well, that is if uh, it's all right with you, Mr. Yates. Yeah, we can use the time. That's days ahead of ourselves, aren't we? Yeah, that's right. That last wick me, he's doing a good job, isn't he? Well, he's keeping the herd moving. That's all that matters. Is it? Well, if you get your money, and so will I. You matter, Mr. Yates, don't you? Getting someplace on the back of another man's horse, that matters to a man like you. Blake, when I need your advice, I'll ask for it, huh? Mr. Yates, you're looking at a man who was at Cold Harbor. Grant sent us into a frontal attack that cost our lives of 5,000 men in the first half hour. That was the worst mistake that you ever made. And he made some others, too. But it didn't keep him from winning the war. You think that over, Mr. Yates. <clears throat> well, he might have something there. Well, this Grant was a bearded fellow. And us bearded fellows make the best kind of leaders. Oh, boy. Cut across Little Corner of Dawkins County into Rowley County, and we're ten miles from Bent Fork and three days to make it. Not too bad, huh, Mr. Yates? Not too bad at all. All right, let's move them across. <laughs> Hold 
them up. Hold them up. What can I do for you, Sheriff? Keeley's the name. John Keeley. Where do you intend driving this herd, Mr. Gates? Uh, just through the county, over to Bent Fork. Texas cattle, huh? Yeah. Well, we got a quarantine on Texas cattle. You can't move them out of this county to Bent Fork for 60 days. You got no reason to quarantine us? Sure have, Mr. Yates. People in Dawkins County, Texas cattle means ticks and Texas fever, unless proved otherwise. 60 days will show it up or not. Right, Doc? Doc's kind of vet. Look, you know, I don't blame you for being cautious, but uh, cold weather kills ticks. And this whole herd's been wintered up in Colorado, Wyoming country. Now, uh, I have a document. A test of this, all signed by the owner and notarized by a justice of peace. You don't mind? Just, we'll just move our herd right out of your way. Nope. All Texas herds have been wintered. Cost beans to pay off a JP and get a swear paper. No, mister, this herd stays in quarantine. Lash! Uh, we're going to turn the herd around and take them back across the river. We'll find ourselves at crossing that doesn't go through the sheriff's county. Hold it. Just wasting time and breath. Look behind you. What's the idea, Keeley? I can't let you spread grief, sickness, and desolation in another county with this herd of yours. And just to make sure, I'm going to put you under $5,000 bond. I don't have 5000 I don't have 500 I wouldn't pay you five cents, and I do have that much. Well, in that case, you'll just have to move your herd a little nearer town where we can keep an eye on it for the next 60 days. to worry, Mr. Yates. All you gotta do is trot into town tomorrow, pay off the sheriff, we're on our way. Pay him $5,000? No, no, he don't expect that much. You take it with him, make a deal. Yeah, well, I'll tell you something, I don't like the price. I told you, it won't cost $5,000. I'm not talking about the cost, I'm talking about the price. I don't like payoffs, especially when it's my money. Mr. Yates, you got a job to do. I know what my job is, mister. All right, then do it. You knew all about Keeley, didn't you? That's why Flesher insisted on you being secundo, so you could take care of the payoffs. See, Ace, sometimes you gotta face things the way they are, not the way you want them to be. Now, Mr. Fletcher's got a big investment in this herd. And you never know when somebody might get ideas. Somebody who doesn't like payoffs. All right. I'll go into town tomorrow and make the deal. You'll do nothing. You'll only be doing your work just like I've been doing it. You know what's wrong with you, Yates? You haven't got enough backbone for this job. There's just two reasons I don't take you apart, Whitcomb. One's your age, and the second one, the first time I feel sorry for you. Don't let that stop you. I'm going to town. Mr. Yates? Yeah? Can I come with you? What for? Well, I'd just like to see whether that declaration of independence you people fussed over has really done you any good. All right. Thank you, sir. Mr. Yates! I'd like to go, too. 
Well, my reason isn't that fancy. I got a bad tooth. Real bad. And I'd rather a regular Dennis Yankee than Wishbone. It'd be in my tooth. Well, they can't blame me for that. <laughs> no. I'll wait here. Let's see if that tooth starts aching again. details of your cattle transaction in Bent Fork, the uh, time limit, the penalty, if you're not there tomorrow. After all, Bent Fork is only three miles away, and <laughs> people do, do talk, you know. <laughs> so it's my suggestion that uh, you dicker with him. Dicker? Just like all the rest. Is there something legal we can do to make him let us go? Court restraining order, eh? <laughs> well, uh, the circuit judge, Phineas Larkin, is sitting next door. Well, can we go see him? Oh, uh, good sheriff has him in his big hip pocket. <coughs> make a dicker, Mr. Yates. Well, you're sure not much help, Mr. Yates. No. <coughs> <laughs> well, Mr. Heath, you, know, you wouldn't lay off this cough medicine. It's giving you a terrible cough. something for that tooth. Cough medicine? Yeah, but it's 85% alcohol. Should kill the pain. Probably kill the rest of your tusks, too. Sister Yates. See, you've been keeping bad company. What do you want, Sheriff? I still have that nickel. Mr. Yates, I don't like folks who challenge lawful authority by going to shyster lawyers. And I don't like you threatening the peace of our little town by bringing in armed bodyguards. So this is my deal. I'm willing to impound $5,000 worth of your cattle. The rest of your herd disappears and the $5,000 is forfeited to Dawkins County and that's that. You mean forfeited to you, don't you? Yates, I am Dawkins County. Yeah. Well, I might just take my herd around Dawkins County. Ooh, that'd be breaking a legal order. I guess I got enough deputized men at each end of town to see that nobody breaks any court orders. And enough guns, Yates. You can't take it with Keeley. And pulling a fool stud like waltzing into a lawyer's office right under his nose. Look, now if you let me handle it, the herd, the men, and the cattle, he will do business with me. And this is your chance, huh? Uh, you're wrong. I haven't been shot out of the saddle yet. Now look, I'm asking you men to back me up. If you quit on me now, you're not going to get a cent. And if you stick with me, you might lose, too. More than just money. 
Because I'm taking that herd right down the main street and across the county line, no matter what happens. Don't try it, Yates. Because if you make it, Keeley will never be able to hold up another herd. He can't afford to let you go through no matter what. You know, you might just be right. But if you back my role, I'll split my profits with each and every man. That is, uh, that has backbone. <laughs> Not me. I just pick up my saddle and my blanket and... Sheriff, we had to get him out of the way, keeping us from moving out. Taking this herd across the county line to Bedford, right through the main street. Yate, you loco! Turn that herd around or we open fire! Now you listen to me, Keely. This herd's been itching for a stampede ever since we started this drive. Now you fire one shot. One lousy shot, this herd will tear your town apart. And everything you own in it, mister.
one shot and we'll tear this town apart. You're bluffing. Gilly, believe me, take my word for it, he means what he says. what those English lords wear when they go outdoors and I'm as good as they are any day. <laughs> I told you my lucky piece would see us soon. I like I said, this is one cattle drive. There wouldn't be no trouble. Well, you look at that hat. <laughs> yes. Ah, lads. I guess there's no use pretending that it's all been sweetness and light. But when the chips were down, you came through all right. Yeah. Have a good second, huh? Segundo. I never would have risked that much, so, Mr. Yates. I, I never could have. Picture alone is worth fifty dollars. Lies. Gil. Gil favor. Oh. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah, you know, I, I, I was expecting somebody else. Gil, um, sit down. Hmm? Oh, okay, just, just a minute. Take that. for you. Sit down. How are you? Okay. Uh, why don't we have a drink? Uh, come on, come on, come, come on. Well, well, Gil, it's... Oh, gosh, it's good to see you. Tell me all about yourself. Here you are. Uh, what brings you to this part of the woods, huh? Driving a herd to Denver. Army's got us held up a few miles west of here. A little car with trouble. I had some time on my hands, so... Well, it couldn't have worked out any better. Say, if, if you had have, uh, if you had have waited another week, we would have missed each other. Um, what happened, Lodge? Oh, that's uh, bad cards and good whiskey. <laughs> ah, but uh, you don't have to worry about me. I'm, I may be down, but, oh, sir, I've still got plenty of bounce in me. I got plenty of bounce. Well, this is run down a little, but it shouldn't take too much work to fix it up. I'll uh, tell you the truth. It's, uh, it's not mine anymore. The bank foreclosed on me last week. They give me a month to clear out. See, uh, I've got some money in a bank in San Antonio. Not ain't much, but... Ah, thanks, thanks, Gil, but hand out won't do me any good. No, I, I need something more substantial. What I gotta do, I gotta start ranching again some other place. Some place where people don't know me. Some place where I don't have a reputation to live down. Got a place in mind? Colorado. How come Colorado? Because that's where you're going. Well, I don't see what my going there has anything to do with it. You know? Come on, I'll show you what. Is 
See those cattle? 30 of them. That is all I own in the world. But I did it before, Gil. I can do it again. I started this ranch 15 years ago with 30 head of cattle. And I built it up to 50,000. You remember? Oh, I remember. Well, I can do the same thing with those 30, if you'll let me drive them to Colorado with you. Those? I don't know, Lige. I thought you wanted to help me, Gil. Yeah, I do. But you're not going to. Lige, you know how much I appreciate what you've done for me. I want to help you. Forget it, Gil. Forget it. I, I didn't realize I was asking so much. After all, I'm not asking you to drive 2,000 head like I used to. Huh? Now, you know how bad it is to mix herds in the middle of a drive. I'm sorry I asked you. Well, if, if you will excuse me, Gil, I, uh, I'm expecting somebody else. Uh, real nice to see you. Oh, come on, lie. All right, all right, you win. Gil, I knew you wouldn't let me down, not you. <laughs> Look, sure, not, not, not after all I've I done for you, or not after all we've been through together, huh? Gil, I, I'll never forget this. I look, Lies, uh, ranches and droving ain't the same. Couldn't be rough. Oh, no, no. Come on, come on. You, you don't scare me. I'll hold up my end of the stick. You don't have to worry about me. And there's rules, Lige. Expect them to be obeyed. First off... Uh... I know, I know. <laughs> it seems like old Mr. John Bollycorn is always at the head of the list. <laughs> always. <laughs> Plus no maverick and no strays. More time and trouble than they're worth. One last thing. I, uh, I give the orders. Understood? Well, you're the boss, Gil. Whatever you say goes. Look here, I, I don't want any special favors. No, sir. I'll eat what the men eat. I'll sleep where the men sleep. I'll stand guard at night. I'll do whatever you tell me to do. Look, we're right over that ridge. Be ready to have your kettle to move out at daybreak. I'll send a couple men over to help you. Good luck, Lige. Hope you find what you want. Thank you, Gil. Uh, what do you say we have a drink on that, huh? No, oh, come just... on, come on, come on. We're not on the drive yet. <laughs> there you are. For old time's sake, huh? Old time's sake. Mr. Driver! Mr. Driver! Welch is back with that new bunch. About time. When you said Crowling's bunch was a draggle tail group, you weren't just being polite. Pasture cows always trouble the first day out. Well, as long as it's only the first day, we have got enough trouble without... Yeah, and messing. standing here ain't gonna solve any of our problems. Get out there and get them tacked on. Joe, you get up to point. Get them strung out. It's the army of horned elephants. I sure don't like the looks of those cattle. Well, we ain't passing out blue ribbons for the looks. We're driving them, not judging them. Well, I may be wrong, but you know what kind of cattle those are. Look, we're sure paid to cook, not judge cattle. Now, when I want your advice on the merits or demerits of the cattle, well, I'll come and ask you. Until then, get packed and get rolling. Wishbone, I haven't seen cattle like that before. Just hope you never see any more of them. They are called querencias. What's that mean? Pasture cattle. Don't like to be moved. Better word for them is trouble. The thing about querencias, the further away from home they get, the worse they get. Yeah, you might say the same thing about Mr. Favor. We better get packed before he gets any worse. <laughs> I 
sure hate to let the boys down. First day out, no. But I sure couldn't do much driving with a foot like this now, could I? Never heard of anybody kicking his herd to market. <laughs> to keep these granite heads moving. Yeah, well, just don't go putting ideas in my heads. All right, it's just the first day. They'll be all right as soon as their trail broke. Well, I'm a drover, not a mule skinner. We're working like a pack of donkeys. There's His Royal Highness riding up ahead with a wishbone like he owned half the state of Texas. Yeah, well, his new boots gave him a blister. Yeah, well, his saddle's given me one. They wish, uh, how would you like to go part interest on my new ranch, huh? I, uh, I, I give you 25% for $100. But I'll do better than that. 50-50? How's that? What do you say, partner? No. Long day. Now, don't remind me. Oh, that's the craziest bunch of stock I ever worked in my life. It was like rounding up a bunch of bees. It's all in a day's work. We lost ground today means everybody up bright and early first thing in the morning. That just doesn't make sense. Why'd the boss do it? Just ain't like him to let something interfere with the drive. Yeah, that crowning sure turned out to be a dead weight. Why not? When he's got jackasses like us to do all of his work. Well, now that you mention it, Joe, there is sort of a resemblance. <laughs> Must be them ears, Joe. They do kind of stick out a little. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well then, uh, good evening, boys. Good evening. <laughs> Mind if I join you? Looks like you already have. What any better? <laughs> you asked me that in the morning. <laughs> a coffee, Mr. Crowning? Well, if you've got nothing stronger. <laughs> Browning, maybe the boss didn't tell you, but he... Oh, now, now, now. I was only joking. Sure. <laughs> Don't worry. I know the rules. Oh, yeah. Maybe I never actually rode the trail myself, but I have sent thousands of cattle up north. Ooh, let me see. I had more than 50 hands working for me on my ranch at the same time. 100 at roundup time. What happened? How about that coffee, Mopey? His name's Mushy. <laughs> Don't mind me. You know, I was always terrible with names. I am just terrible. You know those 50 hands I was telling you about? I'd be lucky if I could remember 10 of the names. <laughs> I thank you. But you just ask Gil sometime. He'll tell you why. You know, it used to take a man all day long just to ride from one end of my ranch to the other. You still didn't tell us what happened. Well, now, that would... Uh, take more time to tell than you got to listen. Let's just say that I mismanaged my affairs. All right with me. Quiet down, you slap side of your head! Wake up! 
I wasn't sleeping. I was just resting my eyes. That's what they call sleeping. How you doing? Well, I'm too numb to know. You're going to take second guard tonight, Jim. Oh, who's got first? Him. I'll believe that when I see it. Keep your eyes open. I'm going to tell them right now. I'll do that. How they doing back here? Oh, so far, so good. They won't cause you any more trouble. Where were you last night? Flat on the back, slept through the whole thing. <laughs> I've been that way all my life. Yes, sir, once I'm asleep, I'm long gone. Oh, I got a play that might keep you awake. That's night hawking. You can have the first shift tonight. Hey, that suits me. I told Gil when I started out, I didn't want any special favors. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think your ramrod likes me. Oh, I wouldn't say that. Does he think I deliberately slept in last night? Never was much for mind reading. What do you think? I think we got some cows to punch. God! Yeah. <laughs> think they are? Kiowa, seems the lieutenant was right. One thing's for sure, they're not just sitting up there for the view. Yeah, looking's one thing, taking something else again. Pass the word, I want a rifle in every boot. But no shooting, unless they ask for it. Right. as fine a seed animal as I've ever seen. Well, just forget it, Cronin. Boss said no maverick in I'll take it, Mr. Favor. You just take care of the drag. Cronin! Well, looking at him ain't gonna stop him. <laughs> You no strings. I'm sorry, Gil. Oh, sorry. Look, I, I, I won't do it again, Gil. I promise. <laughs> My knee. I, I must have twisted it. Right, you stay here. I'll send Mushy back for you. What are you waiting for? You want to stay here and hold his hand? Kiowas and then Corinthians, and, and now a cripple. Yeah. Who'd you say was going to take that first guard? Fine, Doctor. I'll be up and around in the morning. Mountain lion following us. Be rough on stragglers. Stragglers? 
You mean my cattle, don't you? You always was a good shot, Lige. Thought you might go after him as soon as the sun's up. Can't spare anybody else. Uh, you just leave that cat to me. I'll take care of him. And uh, don't make too wide a swing. Saw some car with this morning. See me, Mr. Crowney? Oh, yeah, yeah. I'll, uh... I'm feeling a little better. I think I'll be trying out this leg of mine pretty soon. Well, glad to hear it, sir. Oh, now, look, you don't have to give me any of that sir business. I'm just one of the boys. You know, you must let this fancy outfit fool you. Matter of fact, it's the only suit of clothes I had left. And see these boots? These last pair of good boots I own. Well, they're mighty nice. Mighty muddy, you mean. Hey, I, I, I was just thinking, if you got a minute, maybe you wouldn't mind uh, cleaning them up for me. I'd do it myself. I wouldn't ask you, except uh, the, the, my head is just giving me fits. Well, I was supposed to help Mr. Wishbone clean up. I don't suppose he'd mind, though. Oh, it only take a minute. I won't forget you. Thank you, Mopey. My name ain't Mopey. Oh, that's right. <laughs> Mushy, I forgot. <laughs> no offense. No. Oh, I wonder if you'd uh, mind hand me those saddlebags, please. Thanks, Mopey. Mexicans are called Pancho. We have many other names. Oh, yeah, yeah, I know, but I can never remember what they are. <laughs> no offense, of course, but they all sound like Pancho to me. <laughs> oh, nothing matter with Pancho, is there? Now, now you take my name, Lige. You ever hear of a stupider name in all your life? <laughs> <laughs> sit down, sit down. Maybe for a minute. You, uh, you play cards? Poker, blackjack. Well, what do you say we lay out a few hands, huh? Just to pass the time. Low stakes. Well, uh, all right, senor, uh, but uh, only for a few hands. Just to pass the time. <laughs> you know, win a dollar, lose a dollar. <laughs> One more. Bastante. Oh, pay 20. Oh, blackjack again. Oh, that's too bad. I know how you feel. I've done plenty of losing myself. Mala suerte. Hey, hey, now, now, now. Don't be a sore loser. I am only angry at myself for playing. Huh? All right. Here you are. Take the money back. I don't want any hard feelings. I hope this don't happen every night. Put more men on them tomorrow night. Can't do that. I'm rotating the men every four hours the way it is now. I'm too tired to argue about it. Just do it. Boss. Yeah? The men need a rest. I've been thinking. Look, we've lost enough time as it is. We're moving out at daybreak. Anything else? 
Yeah, I just stopped thinking. Lonesome over there by myself, you know. You get to talking to yourself. <laughs> what could have happened to anybody? You don't think I fell off that horse on purpose, do you? No, it's just the breaks of the game. That's the way things go. There are 20 men on a drive, and I had to be the one to fall and twist my knee. That's the way my luck's been going lately. Yeah. Look, I know it's just as hard for you fellas as it is for me, but I tell you what, I'll make it up to you. I work twice as hard just as soon as I'm able to be up and around on this knee. Well, I... I know I don't look it, maybe, but I can ride with the best of them. You ask Gil if I can't. Gil will tell you. Mr. Favor to you. Stay awake anyway. Oh, why? I really rode in a couple hours. Well, uh, this stuff will keep you awake. It won't do anything else. Ooh, I tell you, that is terrible. <laughs> it's just like pure alkali. Well, it wets down the dust. How'd you like something to wash down the dust, huh? Like what? Watch and wait, my friend. Watch and wait. elixir guaranteed to cut any dust anywhere anytime i'll drink coffee oh come on come on i'm just trying to be friendly that's the reason i brought this along in the first place i was gonna pass it around among all the boys all right all right if they are too good to drink with me that just means there is more for you and me oh come on Quit. nobody will know Just don't sit there looking at it. Hmm? <laughs> well, if you're not going to drink it, give it to me. Well, maybe one won't hurt, huh? Nah, nah, of course not. <laughs> Just enough for one drink apiece. What do you say we kill a soldier, huh? You bet. Very, very, very. Let's have a little toast. Why not? Why not? To Colorado and the founding of a new crowning ranch. Oh, Colorado. No, 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 no. Colorado. All right, all. Oh. <laughs> well, I got me one friend anyway, huh? 
Pretty here, Quince. If you ever need a job or anything, you just let me know. Get in touch with me. I'll take care of you. If everything goes the way I expect it will in Denver, right? you just, just let me know. Remember, I was the first one to give Gil a job, Boston. Good dish. Uh-oh. Got to get rid of this, huh? How in the world would you... Good night, amigo. <laughs> My boy, here is a tip for you. Oh, oh no, sir, that's all right. <laughs> Seems like that cat's getting awful close. <laughs> I got something that'll stop him. <laughs> This'll stop him. Well, that's a mighty fine looking rifle. The best, the very best. It's a Henry repeater. Accurate, up to 100 yards. Of course, you have to be a real man to know how to handle these things. But I needn't tell you anything about that. A drover like you, why, you probably cut your teeth on a shooting iron, huh? Well, I do know what's in the hole. <laughs> Modesty, the mark of a true frontier. Do that. Ooh, that leg, that leg. That was too bad about that cat. I was gonna go and get him come to sun up. But with this leg, I don't. Oh, I sure hate to let Mr. Favor down. Well, my lions could be mighty dangerous around to her. Yes, indeed. Uh, we, well, maybe I'll feel better in the morning. Oh, oh, Mopey, would you mind checking over this rifle for me? You know, I wouldn't want to have a misfire with only one leg under me. Well, certainly, Mr. Crumming. One leg. That's all right. I'll make it, Mopey. I'm the only one they got. Jim, come on, it's your trick. Jim, come on, wake up, it's your turn. Where'd you get it, Jim? Come on, where'd you get it? Yeah, amigo, amigo, partner, partner, partner. What are you doing up? Huh? I couldn't sleep. What are you about? Oh, no, I'm just going to get uh, Scarlet to uh, replace me on guard. Scarlet? Yeah. But Quince was leaving you. Oh, no. Well, see, Quince, he don't feel too good. And uh, I don't mind. No, Scarlet won't mind. There's no problem. No, hey, uh, no, Billy, there's no problem. I, 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 it, it, no. Quince? Huh? Hey, 
north in the morning. Look, you're jumping to conclusions. Head down. I'll take his watch. You can't fire a man without hearing his side of it, especially Jim. When I say no drinking on the drive, that's what I mean. Well, it might not have been his fault. You don't know. Oh, yeah, sure. Somebody held a gun on him and forced the whiskey down his throat. Sure. See a door either. You looking for something? Whiskey. Whiskey? <laughs> yeah. Judging from smelling you, it's pure sour mash. Now, where is it? Uh, you know, it's against the rules to pack whiskey. At least that's what Gil told me. I asked you a question, Crowning. I don't want to ask you again. All right, all right. It's gone. It's all gone. So is Clint's gone. Ah, oh, come on, Ramrod. Don't take everything so serious. All right, so maybe you did catch Jim a little drunk. What are you gonna do, turn him into Gil? I don't have to. He already knows. Gil knows? That's right. He just got through firing Quince. He, he can't do that. He, not in the middle of a drive. You don't know your old friend, Gil. He just did it. I, I don't know. I don't know what to say. Well, you can start out by telling Gil where the whiskey came from. No, I, I can't do that. I can't do that. Look, Yates, you got to understand. Colorado. Colorado. That's all I got left. Not right, Roddy. You gotta talk to him again. Can't do that. You know how the boss feels about the drinking on the job. Oh, well, look at that. If it isn't the bluebird of the morning, all chirpy and chipper. I don't know sermons. Just coffee. Like a little whiskey, huh? Oh, don't, Roddy. Thank you, Bush. Uh, where's Mushy? Beats me. I had to get him chop my own wood this morning. Can't depend on anybody anymore. Just don't say nothing. I've been up all night trying to get up enough guts to tell Gil. I just can't. There's nothing to tell. Uh, look, when we get to Denver, I'll make you a partner. 50-50, how's that? Why, in three or four years, you could buy and sell these cowpokes. Why don't you quit dreaming, Crowning? Colorado's no different than Texas, and men don't change. Only the senior. But that cut, Gil. All right. Yeah, I'll uh, I'll settle it right away. It'll be ready to move out in fifteen minutes. Thought I told you to fire Quince. I did. And what's he still doing here? He's riding with us till we cross the river. Free range, ain't it? Got something to say? Spit it out. You won't like it. Well, I'm still listening. Well, it's about Quince and your old friend Crowning. Didn't know you sent anybody out for that cat. I did, but he ain't gone yet.
was your rifle, Lige? I, I gave it to Mushy. Mushy? You mean that fool's up there all by himself? Let's go. I'm going with you. Hey, I didn't tell him to go. What's he doing? Oh, fine. This head's too hard to crack. A few dents in it. Well, it's about time you came around. All right. What happened? I, I, I just don't know, Gil. Mr. Favor, it wasn't his fault. He didn't tell me. How much you didn't get the idea to be a big game hunter all by yourself? Let's have it. Yeah, maybe I didn't tell you, Mushy. But I gave you the rifle, and I gave you the idea. I, yeah, I, I may just as well have said it myself. I, I admit it, Gil, it was my fault. The same thing goes for Quince there, too. That whiskey, Gil, that, that was my whiskey, but I, I just meant to be a friendly little nightcap. Oh, and what was you planning for Mushy? A friendly little funeral? Gil, I was wrong. I admit it, but it won't happen again. I mean it this time. But so do I. You're through. No, I promise, Gil. You promise? How many times you got to use a word before you wear it out? No, no more crowning. Uh, this time you stand or fall all on your own, no more having a fool like me to lean on. Gil, I didn't mean it that way. It's always been that way with you, ain't it? People are just there for you to take, to use, or to step on. Well, no more crowning, they're gonna step back. Roddy, cut out his beat. Line him south. Quint, you're back on point. Rest you get on the herd. He was just as well, huh? Gil always was a pretty good judge of his own men. Oh, and Rowdy, uh, never mind bunching my cows. They'll go on home all by themselves. Uh, how are you feeling now, Mushy? Uh, just fine, Mr. Connie. Sure, I'm sorry. Sorry. Uh, that's just a word. You remember what Gil said. Here, you keep this. You earned it. Good luck, Mushy. Same to you, Mr. Coney. Morning, Jesus. <laughs> hey, I got your name right that time, didn't I? You still mad at me about what happened last night? Senor, you can put your cards away. I have no more money. I cheated you, Jesus. I marked this deck. I guess that's the only way I can win at cards. When you lose as often as I do, you don't care how you win, just so long as you win. Here. No, go on, it's yours. Thank you, senor. Now, how about tightening up the sense on that horse, huh? Si, sí, senor.
Get back to the herd. Can we help? No. No, I'll take care of lives. For old time's sake. I think it's better, Mr. Favor. I do what I can, Senor Favor. And he's doing all right. It ain't hurting it at all. Of course, sir. I don't know what Senor Wishbone would do if he was here. And what did you do? I gave Senor Scarlet some medical whiskey. No wonder he ain't hurting. Only thing is, I feel terrible not being able to ride. Not one good thing it gives Mushy a chance to be a drover for a while. That's good. Keeps him from cooking. Well, that's good. matter. What is it? Beef enchilada. A beef what? Enchilada. Ain't you never eaten Mexican food? 
Well, I don't like to eat nothing that I ain't familiar with. Well, Jesus made it for us, and in fact, it's mighty tasty. And why does it look like it's already been eaten? <laughs> Jesus is relieving mushy on the cook until Wishbone gets back, that's all. Now, if you don't like his grub, all you gotta do is tell the boss. But most likely, if you did, he'd put mushy back on that chuck wagon, and you'd be eating mushy special stew instead of that enchilada. I like it. I like it. Steve, I am worried. But what? Maybe the men do not like Spanish cooking. Well, take a look. They're acting like they've been starved for a week. I will feel better when Senor Wishbone comes back. In a couple of days now, we'll be at Horsehead Crossing, join up with Wishbone and his friends' herd. Meantime, I could use some more food, hey, Jesus? in here like your horse was on fire. The prairie up ahead is. Three days, forced drive ought to get us through. We'll start moving out as of right now. We'll push night and day. Scarlet, you fix sandwiches for the men. Jesus, every drove is to have a fresh horse every four hours. See, si, senor. We're moving out, starting right now. They're going west, it's gonna mean we won't go through a horse head crossing. We'll worry about that later. If I could only get my boot on. Somebody's got to drive the chuck wagon. on his soul. Amen. And I think the good Lord will. Todd Murdoch was a good man all the days of his life. Good man, good father, good friend. Well, that's all we can do or say here. Jerry, get ready to move the beeves out first thing in the morning. Mr. Favre will be expecting us at Horsehead Crossing. We've been ready for more than a week. Well, I couldn't let Todd Murdoch die alone. Oh, we're gonna have to let his daughter know about this. You got the name of that school she goes to back east? Mm-hmm. I uh, just soon you'd write the letter. The main thing is for her to understand that we'll take care of the herd, get her the absolute top dollar for him. Yeah, I'll get that letter off tonight. Oh, I hope you don't think that I'm being taken charge too much or anything like that. Uh, see, Todd and I was friends for so long. Well, he was always talking about you. Yeah, we was mountain men together. Went through an awful lot in those days. Must be that's why he kind of left me in charge, you see. Give me the ownership paper. Oh, I ain't taking offense. I've been following Mr. Murdoch's orders for a long time. And they're still my orders, even though he's dead. Uh, he sure had you pegged right. Todd told me when Mr. Favor sold her, you were to have an extra 10% for past services. Well, that's very nice of him. You fellows will come into something, too. Nice. Real nice. Well, I guess we might as well board up the house. Get those bees ready to move. Oh, uh, I wonder if it wouldn't be a good idea for me to ride on ahead and tell Mr. Favor what's been holding us up. If we're late, he'll be fit to bust a gut. Then, of course, those drovers having Mushy's food to eat all this time, they're not going to be happy either. Anyway, I want Mr. Favor to have the ownership paper so I don't have to worry about it anymore. So you fellas bring on the bees just as fast as you can. Mr. Favor has to wait, and he'll be mighty unhappy. He's not exactly a patient type. You ain't going anywhere, Mr. Wishbone, without us. He's only fooling. Only fooling with a gun? Well, that's always good for a laugh among friends. A gun never made me laugh. Wishbone don't know you like we know you. Now, tell him it was all in fun. But then you said that we shouldn't let Mr. Wishbone go. Of course. We got used to eating good. We didn't want to stop yet. 
That's what he means. Now, ain't that what you mean? <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, sure. It was all in fun, Mr. Wishbone. We got so used to eating good, Mr. Wishbone. So, if you wouldn't run off and leave us behind, now would you, Wishbone? Oh, of course not. What's a few more days? Mr. Favor and those drovers can just wait. Make them appreciate me more. Thanks, Wish. Yeah. Thanks. Well, fellas, we better get our gear packed. Tomorrow morning, we all move out together? Yeah, sure. Invented horses. Well, I don't think you can rightly use the word invented in relation to horses, Barney. Well, I can think of lots of words to use, but not when I'm in the saddle. What's the matter, fellas? Saddles don't fit too good today. Well, we was just resting the horses, Mr. Favor. Oh, good, good. All right, get moving then. Uh, on foot. We'll give the horses a real good rest, huh? Two more days of forced drive before we get the beef to water. No, I know. Men been in the saddle for 24 hours, though. They gotta have a rest. Boss, there's no doubt we're all tuckered out, but we know the herd's gotta be pushed on. You just say the word and we'll be in the saddle before you can get off the ground. Yeah, any man can't make it in the saddle, I'll uh, give him a lift. We've been pushed this hard before, never killed any of us. Pete's right, Mr. Favor. Matter of fact, Mr. Favor, I ain't even saddle sore. A little foot sore, maybe, but. It's easier to keep going, boss. Laying around just stiffens you up. Next thing you know, I bet the lead steer is telling me how to do the job. Now, I said we need a rest. What are you all doing standing around not resting? My job is to get the herd in. Every one of them alive and as much of the crew as I can. Scarlett, you get a boot on that foot yet? See stupid bandages. All right, all right. You stick with the chuck wagon. I miss old wishbone. You? 
Ain't you the one that complains the loudest about wishbones cooking? Well, I'm saying I miss him. I'm not saying my stomach misses him. Yeah, well, Wish probably had not time of his life, horse Ted Cross. Oh. changing its direction. The water? Just beyond that. That's where we're going, then. You can't drive a herd through that. Can't go back, neither. Last water we was at was three days' drive from here. Three days' forced drive. You think the herd can make that? Nope. Why don't you just throw that bucket away? Oh, that? Oh, I got too attached to that one. Get it fixed and we get to Horsehead Crossing. Are you sure the trail boards are still gonna be there? We're kind of late. Mr. Favor will be there, don't you worry. He may be mad as a hornet with nobody to sting, but he'll be there. Probably waiting to sting me. Thinks a lot of you, don't he? Oh, yeah, what kind of a team, you might say. If you don't say it so as he can hear you. took the wrong turn. They took the wrong turn, didn't you hear me? You doing what I think you're doing, Jerry? You're wrong, Wishbone. See, those leaves are gone exactly where I intend for them to go. Wishbone, like you said, and no split for the trail boss. And no split for Todd Murdoch's daughter either, huh? I always thought you were a sly one. Well, it don't take any mental giant to figure what you're all planning to do. We're gonna cut you in, too. Thanks for nothing. I didn't think Wishbone would be asking for a share. After all, he's honest. More than that, I remember Todd Murdoch. Forget him. He's dead. Up at the railhead, these beeves will bring maybe $40 a head. That's $20,000. And none of it yours. Well, we're making it ours. Now, don't talk rough to Wishbone. Now he knows how much money there is, he might want to change his mind. Yeah, I might. I'll be honest with you, Wishbone. Oh, keep honesty out of it. Well, we're not going to make any money with that herd grazing here. Let's go. Sure. And you forgot. The ownership paper. You can't sell beeves to anybody without the paper showing you got a title. It's safe enough with me. I think you'd be safer with me. You've been honest a long time. It might be hard to break the habit. Just possible while we're out driving the herd, you might decide to take off for someplace else, like Horsehead Crossing. We're taking them away from you. Get down off that wagon. You had me fooled, Jerry. I never did think much of these other two. Get down! The dead man thought you was decent and loyal. Shut up! Decent and loyal thief. I don't want to hear any more! Well, get used to the label, Jerry, because you're going to be wearing it a long time. Give us that paper, Wishbone. Put that gun down! You kill him and we'll never find out! Ask me, Jerry. Ask me. Don't tell me you're not the foreman anymore. Why don't you go easy on yourself, Wishbone? Just tell us where you put the paper. You'll never know. Never's a long time. Leave him go. The man 
his age, you bust his ribs. You most likely kill him. He's right. We don't need to bother with him. That paper's on him or someplace in the wagon. We'll find it. quicker our way. Do what you have to do. You know, Wishbone, man can stand pain for an hour, a day, a couple of days, maybe even a week. But then the pain gets stronger than he is, and he talks. No matter how much he don't want to, he just talks. You know something, Mr. Pitts? You aren't gonna have that much time. Because if I don't show up at Horsehead Crossing, Mr. Favor and all his drovers are gonna come looking for me. Jerry? You could be right. Let's make sure he ain't right. If you'd kept your mouth shut, it just might have happened. Oh, it's gonna happen all right. No. No, you're gonna write a letter to Mr. Favor. Yeah? What kind of letter? Oh, a letter saying you decided not to join up your new herd with his, that uh, you figure you can get a better price on your own. I'm not going to write any such kind of letter. You hear that, Milt? He says he ain't going to write any such kind of letter. If you don't, we got nothing to lose trying to find out if you can live with all your ribs busted. <laughs> sense making such a fuss over a little old letter. After all, it isn't like I was giving you the ownership paper. Of course not. You write the letter, we'll get it to Mr. Favor, and then we'll see. You might change your mind about other things. Well, first I'll write the letter, then we'll see. Sometimes on a forest march, late steer cracks, goes bad. We'll need a substitute lead. Well, there's a red one there on the far side. He's got the makings. What do you say, boss? Yeah, he'll do. The herd's bunching up, Mr. Favor. Yeah, lead steer went bad, butchering. Quince, cut out the substitute lead. Get them moving at the head of the herd quick as you can. Yeah. Mr. Favor, why you gotta kill that steer for? Why don't you just put him back with the rest of the herd? How much the rest of the herd just got used to following that lead? No matter where you put him, the rest of just line up in back of him. Afraid it's just the way of cattle, or people for that matter. He's still breathing. He's an old man. 
doesn't tell us where that paper is, he ain't gonna get much older. paper to who skinners all they'd give us is a lousy five dollars a head well that's still 2500 and it's money here and now not four months away in abilene you mean you'd be willing to settle for 2500 dollars instead of 20,000, jerry maybe he is but i ain't you already beat him unconscious what more can you do i ain't killed him yet that sure smells good when's that stuff gonna be ready i'm hungry someplace get off that horse as soon as he came to he went to the back of the chuck wagon started rummaging around a bit found a piece of paper I don't know how I missed it, but it's in his front pocket, his front right pocket. This ain't nothing but a grocery list. 
are you? Never mind him. Let's get the horse. We ain't got none to spare. You haven't got any brains to spare, neither, mister. <sighs> Trying to pull an old trick like that on me. No harm done, old man. We got all the time in the world. Oh, we're gonna find that paper sooner or later. Why get yourself hurt so much? What's the matter, Jerry? You got no stomach for this sort of thing? I didn't want it this way. Of course not. You wanted it nice and easy and friendly and crooked as blazes. I got nothing against you, Wishbone. Oh, thanks. Wish I could say the same for your friends. They ain't my friends. I need their help. Once we sell the beeves, I'll never see him again. <laughs> You'll see him. Or others just like him. No, I ain't gonna stay a thief. He says just to give me a chance. I've been raising other men's steers all my life. I never had more than twenty, thirty dollars in my pocket, and not for long, neither. Not for cards or women or drinks. Year in and year out, my life. Pass through my hands like sand. Well, the money I get out of this, they're gonna give me a chance. Dirty money isn't gonna give you a clean life. No, money ain't clean or dirty. Money is just money. Money is Todd Murdoch's money. He's dead. Well, his daughter isn't. She's somebody I don't know in a place I've never been. Look. If you want to be a rustler, why don't you steal from some rancher that wears a gun and can come after you, instead of some dead man and his daughter? Forget me. I'm trying to save your skin. Well, forget my skin. It hurts some, but it'll get well. You want to save something, look inside your own skin. You'll find more than you can handle right there. They got more brains than all the drovers that ever lived put together. When they're hurt, they bellow. When they're wore out, they stop. Well, Roddy said we'd better stop and rest on the spell. Where is he? He's up ahead. I know. I know you beat. So am I. Now move! Ah, that steer's too spent to move. The boss is trying to raise the dead. Now look, fella. I said I understand. You beat, I'm beat, everybody's beat. Nobody, nobody thinks we can do it. But we're gonna fool them, ain't we, fella? Now you're gonna move. You're gonna move, I'm gonna break your back, buddy. Now move! Move! All right, let's keep moving. 
over now, huh? Now that leads stairs as much a trail boss as you are, boss. That's saying a lot. Chuck Wagon sure needed fresh horses. Si, senor. Uh, the foot, it is better? Well, it'll hold me up, especially when I get back in the saddle. You must be the cook's louse. But, senor, I... I got a note from your cookie. Uh, senor Wishbone? Senor! Who was that? I don't know. Uh, what was the drover doing? Slacking off? It was not a drover, senor. He brings this. It's a letter from senor Wishbone. Well, read it. Let's find out how he's getting along. Dear Gil. Huh? It is what it says. It is what senor Wishbone wrote. I've been on these drives a long time with Wishbone. Never once heard him call Mr. Favor Gil. It sure don't sound right coming from him. Go ahead. Read the rest of the letter. Don't expect me for the drive or the cattle, neither. Mr. Murdoch died, left the beefs to me, and I'm going to sell them on my own. Regards, G.W. Wishbone. Well, that don't sound like a wish, either. Now, he's in trouble, Pete. That dear Gill and that regards G.W. Wishbone, sure sign of it. If his herd wasn't in trouble, I'd, uh, I'd run after that Jasper and find out what's going on. Why don't you ride after him anyhow? Uh, I can't, not without telling Mr. Favor. Tell you what, I'll pass the word. Mr. Favor won't know you're gone until you get back. The rest of us will work harder to make up for it. I'm ready to ride again. So you're not the only one that likes wishbone. All right. <clears throat> I kind of hate to see him ride off alone like that. I think I'll, uh... I think you'll... With that foot like that... for a little skinny old man. You getting like Munson milk? All soft and kindly? Don't you worry about it. Jerry! You getting anywhere with that old fool? Go ahead, Terry. Tell him how far you're getting with the old fool. That paper's got to be someplace. We'll find it. When? Before or after we get to Abilene? <laughs> that paper ain't worth a man's life. You're trying to get yourself that's what you're doing. You're trying to make a better out of me. A man does that for himself. Just tell me where the paper is. I'll make sure they let you go. I swear, you'll come to no harm. It'd be interesting to know what you swear by, Munson. God, your honor, what? How did you know I was thirsty? Now, look, we can't keep on torturing an old man. Let's get rid of the bees here and now, to the Skinners, so we can forget the whole business. At $5 a head instead of 40 I can't afford to take no such loss. You get my letter to Mr. Favor? Trail boss was busy. I give it to the cook's louse. This is as far as we go. You tell us where the paper is here and now, or you're gonna die here and now. All right, time to the wagon. <laughs> Heat lightning. 
That sounds pretty hot. I'd say unless you talk before then, old timer, you'll last maybe three hours, give or take a little. Chuck Wagon or something? No, Senor Rowdy. I I thought maybe you have some trouble and I came to help. Well, if there's any trouble, we're gonna be riding right in the middle of it. I don't mind. It is to help Senor Wishbone. I wouldn't want to say this way he would hear, but he's like a father to me. Yeah. Uh, Senor Scarlet's food is very painful yet, but he is with the wagon. Yeah, something else will be painful. Well, as long as you're here, fine. The only trouble is, these tracks seem to have given out. The ground's too hard. If we go out ahead, maybe we'll, maybe we'll find something. Got no sandwiches. I'm working on it. The men are gonna have to wait. They don't seem to come out right. Well, we don't have much time to eat anyhow. Besides, nobody's got much of an appetite. Well, that being the case, Joe, we're gonna be hitting that fire in less than an hour. Now, if we find a way through it or around it, fine. But if we don't, we got to. Ain't no other way of saving the herd. That's right, there ain't. But what I want to know is if we don't get through, are you gonna be able to side one of these wagon horses and ride out? Sure. But the hardest part was getting my boot on. Well, just remember, they make the fastest horses in the world. Well, the fire burning to their tail ain't no such thing as a slow horse. from over there. 
the Senor Wishbone is in trouble. Jesus, come back here. You don't want to tease old Wishbone like that. He'll get all the water he wants once he hands over the ownership paper. Matter of fact, once he does that, we might even let him go swimming. A nice, cool, wet river. How's that sound to you? I'll see the devil fry you first. You're the ones frying, old timer. Jesus! Watch out! Hey, Tie him up, Jerry. Take Munson's gun, Mother. There's no reason for that. I ain't waiting for one. We're not gonna be able to circle that, Mr. Faber. Well, we're gonna keep trying. Well, there ain't a chance. Men worried about it can cut out now. All right then, get back to the beef. Spoken. Yeah, they're spoken because I stirred him up. What? He'll get it before I do. You drop your gun, mister, if you want the old timer here to go on living. Dead, huh? Well, I guess that cuts him out. Don't look too good, though. Our chances of getting them cows to market. There's always the Skinners. The price ain't too bad if I don't have to split it with none of you. None of you are going to be around. He looks like he'll live to hang. Why don't you untie Jesus, huh? Look too good, Wish. You always have been jealous of my beard. a pretty quiet bunch. I had a hard time stirring them up. Oh, they never did make these canteens big enough. Why don't you shoot, Pitts? I ain't sure. I didn't like what was happening to you. But even more, I didn't like what was happening to me. They made you do it, didn't they? Just like they did me. Well, we got one to bury and... I wanted to turn over the law. Jerry, why don't you stick with us? 
Drive this herd till we catch up with Mr. Favor. Sure. Yeah, that's if Mr. Favor has a herd left. Only one thing, Wishbone. What did you do with that ownership paper? Oh, I hid that real good. <laughs> was all the time. You know, a man looking for something hidden almost never looks right under his nose. Hey, it's a good thing this rain didn't start any sooner. This paper could have got washed away. Hey, you were saying something about Mr. Favor not having a herd? Yeah, well, that was before this rain started. just the way I wanted them to. You see, I wanted them to force me to write that letter to Mr. Favor saying that I wasn't coming back to the herd. But suppose Mr. Favor wouldn't have believed it. That's exactly why I started out the letter the way I did, saying, Dear Gil. You'll excuse me, Mr. Favor. Of course, Mr. Wishbone. Because I knew the minute he laid his eyes on that Dear Gil, he'd know something was mighty well wrong. Yeah, I would, if I'd ever got the letter. Oh, yeah. Well, uh, you were kind of busy at the time. So you just took off from the herd without notifying anybody? Now, wait a minute, Mr. Favor. It's a good thing for me he did. Oh, I appreciate it. I do. That's why he's gonna ride drag for only a week. Drag? <laughs> Yeah.